Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 5. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 12 of Book 5. Before we begin, a couple of definitions, or actually a single definition. If we have two ratios, a to b and c to d, and if they are equal, then the magnitudes a, b, c, and d are called proportional. In addition to this definition, the word antecedents is used to describe the first part of each ratio, and the consequents are described or are used to define the second part of the ratio. And I'm telling you this now, the antecedents and consequents, because it forms part of the proposition. So let's start with the actual proposition. We have three ratios, a to b, c to d, e to f, and they are all equal. This proposition states that if you have these three equal ratios, then the sum of the magnitudes, or the sum of the antecedents, a, c, and e, in relationship to the consequence, b, d, and f, right here, would also be equal to the ratio a to b. In other words, a and b, c and d, e and f, plus the sum of a, c, and e, and the sum of b, d, and f, are all proportional. So let's start with our proof. Here we're starting with our three ratios that are equal. We draw three lines, g, h, and k, that are equal multiples of a, c, and e, respectively. Now we draw three lines, l, m, and n, that are equal multiples of b, d, and f, respectively. Now, according to definition 5, a to b is equal to c to d is equal to e to f means that if p times a is greater than q times b, that also means that p times c is greater than q times d, which also means that p times e is greater than q times f. Well, g is equal to p of a, h is equal to p of c, and so, so on and so forth. So we now have this relationship. If g is greater than l, then h is greater than m, and k is greater than n. Of course, that also goes for the equals, and it also goes for the less than. Well, if we take the sum of g, h, and k, g is greater than l, therefore h is greater than m, therefore k is greater than n. So g, h, and k are all greater than l, m, and n, respectively. Consequently, g, h, and k added together would be greater than the sum of l, m, and n added together. Similarly, that would be true for the equals, and it would also be true for less than. So now we have, if g is greater than l, then the sum of g plus h plus k is also greater than the sum of l plus m plus n. But what is g plus h plus k? Well, if you recall from proposition one, if we have three magnitudes that are equal multiples of three other magnitudes, then the sum will be the same equal multiple of the smaller ones. So if g, h, and k are equal to p times a, p times c, p times e, respectively, then the sum will be equal to p times the sum of a, c, and d. Similarly, l plus m plus n is the same multiple of the sum of b, d, f as l, m, and n are individually to b, d, and f. So now we have g plus h plus k is p times a plus c plus e is greater than q times b plus d plus f if g is greater than l. That should have been black. Sorry about that. So now we have this relationship here implies this relationship, which in turn gives us that P times the sum of A, C, and E is greater than Q times the sum of B, D, F if P times A is greater than Q times B. Looking at this 
relationship here and this here, that by definition means that a to b, the ratio of a to b, is equal to the ratio of the sum of a, c, and e to the sum of b, d, and f. Or in other words, as is shown right here. So therefore, what we've done is we've shown that you can take equal ratios and you can add up the consequences at consequence and add up the antecedents and form a ratio that is equal to the individual ones.